Evan. Well, the Unitech Forum for the Future series has uh, kicked off and it rolls over the next uh, few weeks. And uh, it's all emceed by Rod Oram, who is a, um, a business journalist. In fact, he's had 30 years' experience as an international business journalist. He's worked for various publications in Europe and North America, including the Financial Times in London, which is quite different to News of the World. Um, Rod and his family immigrated from the UK to New Zealand in 1997. He's currently a columnist for the Sunday Star Times, regular broadcaster as well, and also has an extensive involvement with the Ice House. Rod Oram joins me in the Kiwi studio this morning. Morning, Rod. Good morning. Lovely to uh, lovely to see you. Now, we'll talk about the um, future, uh, the Unitech Forum for the Future series, yep. for, but um, first up, I do want to talk about the Ice House. Um, could you give us a brief rundown of exactly what the Ice House is? Yes, the Ice House is the um, entrepreneurship centre at the University of Auckland's Business School, and it was founded 10 years ago. Uh, the inspiration, or uh, the creator of it, was, Dave, uh, was David Irving, right. who was a very successful businessman in his own right. In many year, for many years, for example, he was chief executive of Heinz Watty. Okay. And he was just very keen to help um, um, small owner um, operated businesses to develop more strongly. So that was the so genesis of the Ice House went um, from 10 years ago. Businessman to sort of mentor, I suppose. Oh, absolutely. And um, so there's various elements of the Ice House these days, um, all led this past year by Andy Hamilton, its chief executive. Yeah. And there is indeed the original program, the owner managers. Uh, we're on the, I think it's the 24th cohort. And with that, um, we bring together 25 companies. Um, uh, owner managed yeah. um, for a three day weekend, one weekend a month for five months. And it's really wonderful when you come around those companies with um, you know, some more skills, some encouragement, some mentoring, um, and also the peer support they have in that group. And it's also a physical place as well where uh, startups can um, hire a space within a building, right? Yes, indeed. There's an incubation space there. It's mm. in the old uh, textile centre in uh, the Strand, which is a very attractive place. And hopefully the businesses from there will grow and then go out into the world. Yes, indeed. On the owner-manager programme, um, of all the companies that have been through, so 25 times 24, uh, we've, uh, they grow typically at about twice the rate of companies their wow. size, um, around about 25% a year. Um, but the top quartile of them are growing at about 40% a year. And it was great fun at Ice Ideas, a big conference we had yes. um, a few weeks ago because I ran into uh, one of the people from the first program yeah. uh, 10 years ago. And, you know, back then his company was um, revenues of about, I think, $6 million a year. And in a couple of weeks' time they're now about to announce a very ambitious um, big st um, investment in expansion. So it's great to see that happening. Are they predominantly in the tech space? No, it's very diverse. Um, there are indeed tech companies there um, and that would be more true of the actual incubation space itself but with the owner managers it's very varied um, so some will be exporters some will be importers mm. um, and um, some will be purely domestic companies mm. um, I think it's really important to consider all three companies because we think about exporting fair enough but we also need people who are brilliant here at importing about bringing us the best technology in the world yeah. at the best price and being able to support it. Um, so um, I'm, I'm a, f a fan of good importers too. It was, well, that was interesting, uh, Rod Drury's speech at the Ice Ideas where he said that everyone in New Zealand should think about exporting or should think about themselves as exporters. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great moment when uh, Rod asked the audience, and there was about 650 people in the room, uh, you know, hands up, um, who's floated a company, who's had a big payday, uh, who wants to run a, a stock market listed company, and yeah. very few hands were raised. Mm. When he asked the first question, how many people finance their houses through mortgages, pretty much every hand in the room yeah. went up. Yeah. Um, but the exporting thing is really important because this is a very small market, and you can earn a living here um, in various industries, various businesses, but if we want to grow the economy overall, um, many more companies are going to need to um, be engaged internationally. But the fascinating thing about that is there's actually quite a large number of companies mm. that are casual exporters. They they respond to inquiries from overseas, and um, and it's a haphazard, you know, sporadic activity for them. Yeah. And if we could just get more of those sort of going at this in a more organized, uh, a more planned and committed way, that would be a big help. Tough at the moment with the high 
New Zealand dollar, though, isn't it? It is. But for me, the most fascinating thing about this high exchange rate at the moment is that if you looked back, say, six or eight years mm. um, at a, a, an exchange rate of over 80 cents US to the dollar, the companies were begging for mercy. Well, lots were going bust. But I now know lots of companies that are still profitable at this mm. exchange rate because they've worked so hard on um, becoming a lot more sophisticated, becoming much more confident about what how what price they can charge in the market. We and just now need to plan for above 80 cents. Oh, yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I used to say, get ready for 90 cents the dollar. And I, th I, I wasn't joking, I, but I thought... It sounded that, radical a few I, years I, ago. It, it did. When yeah. I th people laughed, but it's... But it's amazing how many people, I, I keep running into people who say, well, I remember when you said that. I went, yeah, <laughs> like you said, it's right. But we, we kind of took the message that um, you need to be profitable at much higher exchange rates because mm -hmm. in some ways, this is a bit complicated, but in some ways a high exchange rate is actually a sign of economic strength. Yeah, That's a bit difficult in our case because one of the attractions is money flowing into the country um, because of, earthquake rebuilding and reinsurance money, yeah. but also our high interest rates, which attract um, currency um, players. And so th that's actually the real reason for our currency strength rather than real underlying strength in the economy. Okay. Well, looking long term, though, one of the um, other ideas that seemed to flow through many of the speakers at um, the, the Ice Ideas uh, Day was this greening of the New Zealand economy, almost mm. making New Zealand like the, uh, the green tech, the Silicon Valley green tech. Really. Yes. Um, there's huge logic to that for two reasons. First of all, of all the countries in the OECD, or the developed economies, we are the most dependent on our natural environment mm. for how we earn our living. Mm. And it's not just the primary sector. You know, think of the film industry. Mm. There's an element of that. Think tourism. of tourism. Yeah. Um, and when, even education, you get lots of students coming here when for similar money they could get a similar education somewhere else. But they come to university here because this is a great place to you know, enjoy all those they outdoor go, things. Go skiing and surfing that's in the right. same day, yeah. So that's that's our natural base. Mm. But, of course, crucially, this is the great trend in the world, that when we talk about clean technologies, we're looking at vastly improved or new technologies mm. um, that have much less impact on the environment or, actually, even better, work actually sympathetically with the environment. Right. Um, so in a resource-constrained world, that's you know, clearly a big driver. So, for example, um, two years ago, Harvard Business Review had a whole um, edition of the magazine mm. devoted to that subject, and they talked about these issues of green, clean technology, sustainability, as the greatest driver of innovation the world's ever seen. Yeah. So that's how important this is, and and that and we've got that, you know, classic bedrock on which we can build. Do we need to be forced into it? Do we need a, a massive oil shock? <laughs> in order for us to become, you know, because we are so isolated, to become very independent and develop this stuff for ourselves and the, and develop an industry around it so that then we can export it. Um, well. It's always better to be just slightly yeah, ahead, ahead of the curve. Yeah. Not yeah. too far, that's expensive, yeah. that's hard to do. Yeah. Um, but to be very um, aware of those great trends. And mm. you know, everybody's saying, I mean, nobody denies that the price of oil is only going to get higher as it gets harder to get. Mm. Um, and therefore, these new opportunities open up. So let's not wait for the crisis. Yeah. Um, let's, um, let's press ahead on, um, in these very um, exciting areas. Yeah, well, it's these kinds of issues that um, will be discussed at the Unitech Forum for the Future series, um, co covering a, a wide range of topics, really. This week is going to be um, quite interesting, championing Pacific languages in New Zealand, which I guess links into... Uh, business as well, and making sure that the whole community is included in um, in a drive to a, a sustainable and better New Zealand, right? Yes. The overall architecture of the forum is important, um, this being our third. The first one we did um, two years ago was all about the economy and those long-term trends. Um, last year, our second one was all about Auckland and how that um, was facing big change with local government shake-up and all the rest, yeah. and therefore how might we respond. This one is very much about um, um, urban New Zealand um, because we're actually one of the most urbanised countries in the world, mm. even though we still largely define ourselves by our rural or wild parts. Yeah. Um, and so um, the first of this year's forums last Thursday was about creating resilient communities yes. in the sustainable sense, both economically, socially, environmentally. So we had a very 
good wide-ranging discussion on that, and people can look back on the Unitech website to see the video of that. Oh, great. This Thursday um, is about Pacific communities, and um, one of the fundamental issues there is about language and culture mm -hmm. um, to help build that, um, to keep those alive and make them a, a strong underpinning um, of um, Pacific um, New Zealand. Then the following week, mm. um, a week on Thursday, is about um, Maori entrepreneurship. Right. Um, which, and that obviously fits well into those overall themes. The last one's an interesting one. It's about um, reinventing public broadcasting because, mm. you know, the demise of, you know, TVNZ7 and, you know, the charter and all the rest. Yeah. So the question is, how do we tell these stories to ourselves? Um, and that, that doesn't exclude, of course, uh, commercial radio in yeah. any way. Um, but it's very much around um, we, how we find Rob, new ways to communicate. We don't make a profit around here. <laughs> it's, it's hard it's to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that's that, that's why that's how the four forums fit together this year. Yeah. Oh, it sounds really, really good. Well, they're happening every Thursday, um, and they all kick off around about six six thirty. 30. Um, you can go to the Unitech website and see all the details there. And as Rod was saying, also check out the videos. Um, once more again, which is a form of public um, broadcasting. Yeah, really, yeah. Uh, we, we're web streaming, so we really encourage people to join us um, online and um, uh, where you can email, tweet. And we're actually hoping to get people to video Skype live oh, in, great. into the discussion. Excellent. And so do do all of those things because we're keen to have involve the most people we can in this great discussion. Fantastic. Rod Oram has been my guest. Thanks very much, Rod. Oh, you're welcome. See ya. It's coming up to 10 minutes, 10 minutes away from.